What I want to talk about on today's call is the state of marketing, the power of focus, Facebook advertising, the best three sales questions, video marketing, the importance of faces. This call is being recorded. One of the things that I love about Facebook is that it's actually the best everything. No offense to Dan and follow up boss, but Facebook is the best CRM ever built. No, no offense to Intercom, Facebook is the best live chat tool. Facebook, no offense to our own email, Facebook's the best email tool. Facebook's the best advertising tool. Guys, Facebook's taking over webinars. Have you guys seen a webinar with like Ecamm where you can screen share? Like Facebook is eating the world. And so we're all in. Now I will say one thing. Instagram has become a juggernaut. But as much as I love Instagram, who owns Instagram? Facebook is the internet still. Right now, if you look at a curator website, like we have the same site as you guys. We get five or more page views per visitor. We get more than five minutes time on site. And the only difference between your site and our site is the content. We have actually created a digital trench. Like a lot of times I'll ask our sales team, guys, why do you think we have a 40% close rate from conversation to customer? I mean, you guys do this stuff too, right? Could you imagine if 40% of the people you spoke to signed? That's world class. So I asked, them, I asked the sales team, why do you guys think that is? And guess what Darren and Neil said? Fucking me, man, it's me. <laughs> You know, <laughs> fucking, I'm awesome. It's like, well, if you're so awesome, Neil, why was your close rate 1% at dot loop? It, the difference is the marketing. The difference is the content. We have books, we have blogs, we have podcasts. We put out so much helpful information that when we talk to somebody, they're 80 to 90% through our funnel. And you're talking to people at the top of your funnel. So that's what my class is gonna be about, is how can you replicate our marketing machine so that you can better crack the conversion code? One of my favorite sayings is, please don't trip over nickels to pick up pennies. When you go back after this conference, you are gonna deploy ideas. And what I found is that people find an idea and then they move past it to the next one. Guys, you have to double down on the ideas that work. I would argue that you should quadruple down. Now, here's what's cool about the last 12 months. How many of you guys have used and, and are enjoying Curator Brain, right? Guys, Brain is what works. We literally now are showing you 24 seven in real time what's working the best. So a lot of times, just as humans, we wanna know, we have FOMO. Who doesn't know what FOMO stands for? Fear of missing out. We're so worried about what we're not doing that we don't do what we are doing great. So when you go back and try an idea, if you want to do what we teach, if it, whichever session, do it excellently. Double down on what works best and cut everything else out of your business. You still have to get on the phone. The, the fortune is still in the follow-up. It's fun to build a funnel. It's fun to generate leads. But what's even more fun is to convert leads and to follow up with the leads so they become customers. So what's happening right now is the, the, the future of follow-up is actually about who, not about what and how. Like when people ask me to follow up, how many times should I call? How fast should I call? What should I say, right? How many times, how fast, what should I say? Guys, when you know who to call and you know why and you know when, the what and the how are simple. The future of follow-up is about the who, not the how. The conversion code has a new blueprint. We're gonna introduce the conversion code 2.0 because it's not about how many dials, how many, guys, it's literally very simple. You have got to follow up with the right person at the right time with the right message. That's it, that's follow-up. And I know that gets very difficult when you have 18,000 leads in your database. But our technology makes that as simple as possible. I was actually up in Minnesota. Where's my man Richard? Where you at, Richard? Our Minnesota client, there he is, right up front. I love Richard, I gave him a hard time because I was stressed out, but I apologize. Okay. 
people work style. So I'm in Minnesota, and I was doing one of my uh, homes.com events, and I, I teach boiler room sales. I love it. I've taught it at Excellence a couple times. And I was talking with the person on Richard's team that calls the leads. And she's like, Chris, I love the book, but I just have a question. I'm like, what? what's going on? She said, well, here in Minnesota, um, I, when I call, I start off and I say, hi, how's it going? And they say, good. I'm like, well, then do that. You know what I mean? She, she, she felt bad that she wasn't saying, hey, grab a pen and paper and write this down. <laughs> hey, I know that you're working with an agent, but she's like, it, it, people here say hi. They're nice to me. <laughs> Go for it. Lucky you. That's what I was thinking. Jeez. Because people are nice to me in the boiler room. But, like, you've got to make this stuff your own. Like, if saying hello, how's it going works, say hello, how's it going, guys. I don't think we need a training on that. But the, the scripts can be too harsh. And the future of follow-up is not about scripts. It's about the right person with the right message. Sales should not be sleazy. Sales should be easy. And we're excited to introduce some new sales technology at the event as well that's going to make it easier than ever to find who to call and why to call and what to say. The reason we want to follow up is to get on the phone. Conversations are what create customers. There, I went to Enman recently, and they, they let me do the boiler room talk, and, and it blew people away. But the people that went, they wanted Snapchat tips. Like, you better be better at sales than Snapchat. Your clients don't even use Snapchat. But when I was growing up, you guys, my grandfather, he, he, he didn't give me a lot of advice. He was a lifelong entrepreneur. He was a mechanic. He would buy minivans and buy old cars and fix them back up and make a few hundred bucks. And he would sell the extra parts at the flea market. And he, just before he died, he, he didn't give me any like, life advice. So I, I really remember the advice that he gave me. He said, Chris, I know that I'm leaving a world where you can make more with your mind than with your hands. That was it. That short conversation influenced me so much. Well, I was talking to my kids the other day. I was thinking about that moment with my grandfather. And what I told my kids is I said, what's going to matter in your lifetime is actually two simple things. Number one, people skills. If you can't look people in the face and you can only look at Facebook, fuck you. <laughs> Here's the other one. Here's the other one. Thank you. The other one is what I call critical thinking. We live in a world where you could Google anything. Hey, Alexa. Hey, Google. And when you can ask any question and get the answer, it, it causes people to stop thinking critically. So every time we like, you guys have any friends where you're like in the middle of a car, oh, let me look it up. It's like, dude, we're talking about it. Let's fucking talk about it. <laughs> you know? Shit pisses me off. But like eventually you can go look it up. But critical thinking and people skills are the key to the next decade because technology is becoming ubiquitous. The digital dust is settling. You can get technology anywhere. You can buy a house from a million people. So the people that look you in the eye are going to win. The people that don't ask Alexa are going to win. If there's one metric I want you to remember when you get back, it's how many meaningful conversations am I having per day? That's the key to success in this business. How many meaningful conversations did I have today? One of the things that we think about a lot at Curator is that we never earn your business. We're always earning your business. We never feel like you're a customer. We always feel like we have to earn your business every single day. We are always selling. I was listening to Craig do a coaching call, and, and, and he, that's a client, Craig, you know what I mean? And Craig will show you a tip. Hey, is that new to you? Hey, are you glad you did the call today? Did that, did that help? Is that going to help your business? He's tying down. He's using sales techniques in service. You've got to always be selling. Like one of my favorite quotes is from Biggie. The key to staying on top of things is to treat everything like it's your first project. Treat it like it's your first day. Act like an intern. And that's what our company does. We work hard every single day. We never feel like we've made it. 
We don't care about the ink list. We're glad we made it, but we're, we, we are not thinking about that. Think like it's your first day. Always be selling. Once you get the listing, once you get the buyer, once you get the past client, you never stop selling. A, B, S, always be selling. Last year, I don't know if you guys remember, but the most popular slide was a picture of Michael Phelps, and he was winning a race, and the other guy was looking at him while he was winning. And, and the slide said, winners focus on winning, and losers focus on winners. What a great quote. I am so excited, you guys, about Eric Thomas tomorrow. Eric Thomas is my favorite speaker. And I don't really have any favorite speakers. I like Gary Vee, I like Eric Thomas, that's about it. And one of Eric Thomas's videos that I never forgot, he said, guys, I'm gonna explain this real simply. Winners win and losers lose. <laughs> that was it. Winners win and losers lose. That's how life works. So we get ripped off at Curator a lot. Like, have you guys ever seen anybody in your market trying to emulate what you're doing? It's frustrating, I get it. I totally get it. But what you have to remember is that no one can copy me. They can copy what I do, but they are not me. You can't clone Chris. You, they can't copy you, Amy. They can try. But when people are trying to copy you, it means they're behind you, which is where you want them to be. You guys are not your logo. You're not your ads. You're not your slogan. People can't replicate you yet, by the way. <laughs> you could copy me, but you can't clone me. And I don't give a shit about competition. You guys should have seen us at these conferences. Every booth is like, well, let me show you how we're better than Curator. And we're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I, I'm really glad we did this year is we did not make excellence bigger. We actually made excellence better. Because what creates quantity is actually quality. Quality is what creates quantity. And I will say that number one, excellence isn't easy. And by the way, excellence is expensive, by the way, it's very expensive. But when you create a culture of excellence, no one can stop you. People ask me all the time, and, and, and the, goal with, the goal with being excellent is, is that you can actually get bigger and better. Like our net promoter score, our client happiness level, the number of people that are keeping marketer, like all of our metrics are up and to the right as we get bigger. And it's because we expect excellence. We demand excellence. We require excellence. We hire excellence. We exude excellence. We are excellent. And so what happens is people come up to me all the time, Chris, how do you find all these great people? Oh my God, I love everybody. Your team is so great. How do you guys do it? <laughs> guys, it's very simple. Excellence attracts excellence. It starts with you. It doesn't start with them. I love our team. You guys are excellent. But they were drawn to what we're doing. Excellence creates more excellence. Excellence attracts excellence. Who's ready for excellence? So as my brother mentioned, growth can rule. Growth can be fun, growth can be hard, growth can be scary. But ultimately, it's a lot easier to have fun when you're growing when you actually have some rules for that growth. Hey, this is Chris. Thanks for listening to my call. If you enjoyed the call, please subscribe right now. Also share the episode and use the hashtag calls with Chris every week. I choose a few people randomly to win a free signed copy of The Conversion Code, my USA Today best-selling book. You can also visit curator.com 
That's C-U-R-A-Y-T-O-R.com to learn more about my company, which is the one I'm running during these calls. We help small businesses grow faster, and we've been featured recently by Inc., Forbes, Fortune, and Entrepreneur Magazine.